Hi everyone, I'm Trevor from GNR Camping World. Thank you for tuning in to our winterizing video. What we're going to cover today is we're going to cover winterizing of travel trailers, fifth wheels, pop-ups, motorhomes to a certain degree. Please watch this entire video before beginning the winterizing or dewinterizing process. There are some steps in here that you would need to follow in specific order in order to do it properly. This trailer is in full summer mode. Plumbing is fully charged, tanks are full, and it's ready for use. The very first thing we wanna do is we wanna drain as much water out of the system that we can. We're gonna look for something called low point drains. If you look under here, you will see a blue line and a red line. What we can do here on this particular trailer is all we have to do is turn the valves and water will come out and drain. This one actually has a built-in cap on the hot and cold water where you can actually drain it out like this. Then you can go inside and open a valve uh, on the sink, any one of the taps, and then the water will evacuate much quicker. We'll want to come inside and open the actual taps to the trailer. And here we go, open bowl. You can do just one valve even, like one, one fixture. But here gurgling, now the water is evacuating the system. We're going to look for the hot water tank now. Now all these things that we're going to be talking about could be in different locations on different units. This is your hot water tank right here. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. There is a few different kinds and we will show you the different kinds as well. The very first thing you want to do folks is please make sure first of all that the hot water tank is off, that it's not running on gas or electric if they're either either. Also that it is cool. We do not want to do this. We don't want to do any of this stuff while the hot water tank is still hot. Now in this hot water tank, what we want to do, or any hot water tank, we want to make sure we relieve the pressure in the tank before we pull the, pull the, uh, the plug out. And we do this, this is your pressure relief valve. If something happened, that pressure relief valve would allow escape. But here we're going to just open that up. You can hear it gurgling. So now we've got air uh, in there. The water is not pressurized we will now pull the plug and drain this hot water tank. You will need either a 15 16 socket or a one and one sixteenth socket. Now, depending on the type of hot water tank, and like I said, we'll show you both during this video. This particular one is a 15 16 socket. It goes up in here and we remove the plug and let the tank drain. And there goes the water. Here we have a different kind of hot water tank. Now it's, it's the same in principle. It's a tank, it heats, it's electric, it's gas. This one is a little bit different. It's actually a steel tank. Now steel corrodes. So what they do in this one is they offer an anode rod. This is actually the anode rod and you'll see that when I remove it. Cool, it's not hot, it's not fired up recently. We also relief the pressure. See, we're actually relieving pressure. So this again, this is the one and one sixteenth socket. That'll go on here and then we will remove this plug and then I can show you the actual anode rod, okay? And you can open that up and it'll flow out faster, right? Now, there's the anode rod. Now this is a relative or a very good condition one. All right, we're gonna pull this anode rod and see how this one looks. Give you an example. Oh yeah, see, there you go. You can see the core already starting to show. This one is well overdue. This one should have been changed quite a while ago. Now, back to our low point drains. This may sound silly, but we're actually gonna close these drains again. Even though we drained out as much water as we can, there still will be a little bit of water in these lines. So we're gonna go ahead and close these valves, okay? Again, leaving the hot water tank valve open. I've removed the sofa from here. This is where the hot water tank is located. This is also, uh, conveniently enough, right where the water pump is located. Again, each trailer is different. It may be under the kitchen sink. It may be under the fridge. It may be under a bed. It may be un under the dinette. 
could be in a lot of different areas. The pump and the hot water tank will not necessarily be together either. The hot water tank could be here, the pump could be a completely a different location. So this particular uh, system and this hot water tank and this pump actually has two very, very convenient features, which if your trailer doesn't have it, it could be added. There's actually parts for that. But this is a suction tube that'll take antifreeze right out of the jug. Very, very handy. You don't need to disconnect anything. You don't need to rig anything up. This will go right into the jug, pump it directly through. And I'll show you how all this happens. We're going to bypass the hot water tank. And why do we want to bypass the hot water tank? Well, it's, it's no more than just, this is a six gallon hot water tank. If it's a 10 gallon, that's even worse because now you're going to be pumping 10 gallons of antifreeze right into the hot water tank. It's basically a waste. So we bypass the hot water tank and all we're going to do is winterize the lines and the fixtures within the trailer. So how do we do that? If we can look a little closer in here, what we'll see is you have your supply lines, which will be your blue lines coming in. So these blue lines right here are coming into the system. Uh, and this line right here is actually coming in from the tank. So this is what will draw the water from the tank through the pump and into the supply lines over here. Now, Again, if we leave everything as it is, it's going to pump antifreeze into that hot water tank, which is just a waste. So we can actually create a loop here, and they've done that already here, right like this, where you can now just bypass the hot water tank. So the water is going to not go into the hot water tank at all. It's going to go around it, and now that's where we'll pump the antifreeze uh, into that system. So right now, if you look the way this valve is, that means water is flowing this way. Okay, you see this valve is like that, and this valve is like that, water is flowing. So now you're going to have cold water coming in, goes into the hot water tank, and comes out of the hot water tank as hot water. So again, red is hot, blue is cold, blue, cold coming in, red, hot coming out. Now, if I turn this valve this way, and I turn this valve this way, now the water flows like this. Just like that. It's not going to flow into here. So now we've deadheaded it here. Water cannot go in or come out of the hot water tank. So it's going to come like this. Uh, the cool supply right here is going to come like this. Now it's just going to bypass and go around here. It, even though it's going in the red line, it's going to be cold water because we're not going through the, the hot water tank. That's if we're running water through. But what we want to do, obviously, we want to run plumbing antifreeze through here. All right, so on this system here, we've got a one valve system. So now we've got check valves in here that do, does all the other switching for us. You don't have to do anything but switch this valve over. Now the water flow is here, it's bypassing the tank. So that's how we accomplish it with a one valve system. So that's where we would now put this into a jug of antifreeze. And this valve is no different, right? If the water is, if the valve is running this way, it means it's pulling, this is the pump, by the way, this is your water pump and it's pulling water from the tank and putting it into the system when you're not plugged into city water. So what will happen now is I'm gonna turn this valve this way. Now it's gonna deadhead here. It's not gonna take it from the tank. It's gonna take it from this line, which I will soon put into a jug of antifreeze. What we can do now is we can insert the tube right into the jug of antifreeze, and then we are going to turn on the water pump and we are gonna pull antifreeze from the jug pump it right through the system, and we'll show you that in just a minute. We had the bypass valves installed for the hot water tank. That came from the factory that way in that particular trailer. The suction line to draw plumbing antifreeze right out of the jug, that was installed at the factory, but some trailers don't have that. How do we get around that? This is a couple different kinds of water pumps. You're gonna have an inlet, which is gonna draw the water from the tank, and you're gonna have an outlet, which puts it through into the rest of the trailer. If you look, there's actually an arrow on this. So that means that this is gonna go out to the trailer and this is gonna come in from the tank. Then we would pull off the line and we can install a suction tube. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. And it's the same thing on this one. It's a different brand of water pump, but it does the same thing. And it has directional markers on here, arrows. So it's gonna pull it from here and it's gonna push it through here to the trailer. You can buy this fitting right here and make your own length of tube or buy a length of tube, put that in, follow the arrow again. The arrow goes this way, so it's going out to the trailer on this side, so it must come in from the tank on this side. You would pull out 
from the, from the existing plumbing in the trailer, put this in, and it just locks in like that. Very simple. So again, to remove it on this style, to remove it, you lift this up, pull this out, you leave that water line just loose, and then you create your own tube, put it in here, lock it on. Now you can put this into the jug of antifreeze and make it very simple to winterize. The other style, it's the same, does the same job. It's just that now we would put this on here. We would remove this from the existing plumbing, put it on here, and then you can put this tube into the jug of antifreeze. Then when you're done, you remove these tubes, these hang on to them, put them in your garage, whatever, and then reattach your plumbing. Remember, when we drain the water system, we open some taps to allow water flow uh, out the uh, low point drains. We're gonna need to close those taps now just to build up pressure of the antifreeze going through the system. Now here we have a water pump switch, okay? Again, could be in locations, typically they look like this on a control panel, but it could be a single switch somewhere. It could be in the bathroom, could be in the kitchen. So you'll have to find that switch first of all. We're gonna turn that switch on and it's gonna pump antifreeze right from the jug. It'll build up pressure and it'll slow down because now we've charged the lines with the antifreeze. Now, it hasn't ran everywhere that we need it to because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open valves and we're gonna open the sink, we're gonna open the shower and both hot and cold. Remember, we bypassed the hot water tank so it's gonna need to run through both the hot and the cold uh, water line. I'm gonna turn on this cold and hot water tap in the kitchen. Now what you'll see, you'll see what, expelling water. Remember, all that water didn't come out. You're gonna expel some water. Now you're gonna see this running nice and pink. Maybe we'll do one at a time. We'll do the cold water first. Same thing on this one. See again, more water coming out. Now we're gonna see the antifreeze coming through, okay? We've almost burned through a gallon of antifreeze already. Okay, because these lines, they're long lines in here, right? And the bigger the trailer, the more plumbing antifreeze. This one, I'll probably use about two gallons in here. Some can use three or four. Uh, I sh shut the switch off. I'm gonna change the, the tank, uh, the, the jug of antifreeze. We'll do that right now. I'm gonna turn the pump back on and continue doing what we're doing here. Okay, in the bathroom, we're gonna continue this process. So again, it really doesn't matter which taps you do. It would be nice to try to get further away, but these are all centrally located. So again, the cold water. That's the hot water actually, but that's okay. Let's do that with this one. Always don't forget the toilet. Nice and pink. Again, we're gonna go through the valve here and we're gonna run until it's pink, nice and pink. We run this one until it's nice and pink. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we go through the diverter and that it comes pink out of the handheld shower as well. You know, if you don't want to draw the antifreeze from the pump, you don't want to mess with the plumbing, whatever, uh, and you want to just pump it through by hand, there's a hand pump kit, comes with the tubes, the hoses, uh, everything that you need to draw antifreeze out of the jug and pump it right into your trailer. Remember, you will also need something like this if you have a black tank flush valve, because the black tank flush valve is completely separate from the rest of the trailer. You, even if you pump antifreeze through the entire trailer, you will not be getting into that black tank flush valve. So you need to pump it somehow. This is a great way to do it. In this particular trailer, we have now completed winterizing all the interior fixtures here. We put antifreeze through the tub, the sink, and the sink in the bathroom and the, and the sink in the kitchen. But if your trailer has an ice maker, a dishwasher, or a washing machine, you would have to take care of that. And even if you don't have a full washing machine in there, you could have just washer and dryer prep. Some park models and fifth wheels and motorhomes might have washer dryer prep without actually having a washing machine in it. If you don't have the washing machine in it, it is as simple as turning on the valves with maybe a cup or a pail underneath it where you can let 
the water come out and then the antifreeze chase it through until it's nice and pink just like we saw in the faucets here okay so don't forget about those things let's go look and see what this trailer has outside okay we're outside of this trailer now most trailers a lot of trailers nowadays come with this outside shower this is one of the things that a lot of people forget and overlook when they're winterizing so we're going to show you that and it is no different than every other faucet in the trailer but we just want to make sure that we do get this and what's going to happen is you're going to run the water through until you see the pink antifreeze coming out the outside shower is done need to make sure that we do our black tank flush valve if equipped so we manually need to do this no matter what so if you have a black tank flush valve most likely you're gonna have to purchase one of these pumps so what we'll do again you can see it going through we want to make sure we get plumbing antifreeze enough through there okay if you'll remember inside the trailer one of the last things we did while we were in there is we shut the water pump off that is very important for our next procedure because what could happen is just a tiny little bit of water could be sitting right at this check valve here and that'll freeze and break and we replace a lot of these what you'll do is you'll pull out this screen and if you look inside there you'll see a little button it looks like that's actually the check valve and what you want to do is you actually want to push that in. But again, remember, the pump should not be running because what will happen is antifreeze will just keep pumping, pumping, pumping. We stand to the side. You can use your finger or a little device, but just push that in. And hopefully what should happen is there we go. We got pink coming out. I want to dump a little bit of antifreeze down each of the drains and the toilet just to make sure we got the gray water tank the black water tank and in the p-traps in the sinks you know what there's two sinks here and i'll dump a little bit down each one you know, a little bit going straight in and i like to just leave a little bit sitting on top there you go you're nicely protected now don't forget the sink in the bathroom don't forget about the bathtub again there's a p-trap under there as well and it'll overflow into the gray water tank which is great we're actually going to allow the plumbing antifreeze to drain out and then we want to open some faucets inside if we evacuate as much of the plumbing antifreeze that went in as possible that will allow room for expansion so that's what we're going to do we're going to open these valves the low point drains and then we're going to also uh, open the taps inside as well one other thing we want to do is we want to make sure we drain our freshwater tank. Now, some trailers have a couple different freshwater tanks. Same with gray water tanks. You might have two or even three gray water tanks, depending on the size of the trailer. So you got to be careful and make sure you understand what you, what you have in your trailer. This one has one freshwater tank with a low point drain for the tank as well. It's just like the low point drains for the rest of the system, but this is actually the freshwater tank itself. You just open it up. To do now is we're going to attach our sewer hose to our sewer discharge line so we're going to hook up our our sewer hose to our discharge port on the trailer take the other end and put it into a uh, sewer dump station open the black water valve first let that drain close that valve down then we will open the gray water tank again some dirty water will come out of course as well as the little bits of antifreeze Okay, one thing we really want to talk about here is the batteries on these units. This is very often overlooked during the winterizing process. Everyone focuses on the plumbing, the plumbing, the plumbing, which is important. But batteries are just as important because they're not cheap. If you fail to do the proper steps, the battery will freeze and crack or freeze and expand and just be no good anymore. What we do is we're going to take the battery out, remove the battery completely from the unit. Now, why do we do this? All RVs will have some draw 
off the battery even when they're just sitting there. And it's a very small draw, so it might last a, a day, a week, even a month, you never know, whatever it's drawing. But what'll happen over the winter, you can almost guarantee it, if you leave it hooked up, it will run completely dead, then it freezes, okay? A charged battery shouldn't freeze, but a dead battery will almost certainly freeze. So if it dies, it freezes, then the liquid in there expands, it destroys the battery internally, it is then rendered useless. So what I like to do is I take this out, bring it home. We don't want to store these indoors. These can give off gases. We want to be very careful in a ventilated area or in a garage or a shed. But every month or so, or every even a couple times a month, put on a battery charger. Battery chargers vary too. You want to get yourself a good battery charger that is automatic and will not overcharge. Because if you buy a cheap battery charger that just keeps charging and charging and charging, can overcharge it and cause problems as well. So get yourself a good battery charger that will do this automatically. That'll keep that battery in tip top condition. All right, folks, we've completed the winterizing process. We talked about batteries, we talked about plumbing, we talked about everything to put your trailer to bed for the winter here in, uh, in our cold climate. I hope this was informative. Again, this is to be used as guideline only. Each RV is different. I hope we put this video together in a, in a format that was very useful and helpful, helpful to you uh, to winterize your RV.